Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, so in this episode, we are going to be talking about filtration for my new uh, discus tank. So remember, this tank is uh, eight feet long by four, uh, two feet front to back by four feet tall. So we're talking about uh, 480 gallons of water. And in order to um, have proper filtration of a tank of that size, you obviously cannot go with a hang on the back filter or a canister filter. Uh, I've seen people use like multiple canister filters, but I think it's too much of a hassle. So you basically are confined to a sump. And uh, after doing lots of research, I could be spending thousands of dollars on a custom sump uh, setup for my aquarium. So I basically decided to just build one on my own, uh, relatively cost effective. And I um, also want to show you how I'm going to be plumbing this tank. And uh, hopefully this will save you some money on uh, your next setup. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to be using as the uh, sump container. This is a 40 gallon breeder that I picked up from Petco at the uh, $1 per gallon sale. And the size of this sump fits perfectly underneath the tank in this first uh, compartment here. So basically I have two of the same size and this will sit perfectly down there. And I will also be placing a yoga mat uh, underneath just so like I have this plate here. And this will be basically holding uh, the water. So this is going to be my filter. So the way this works is that from the top, the water is going to flow down into these different drawers. Um, I will be using uh, different types of media for each stage. Uh, I will be drilling some holes on the bottom so that the water you know, flows or rains actually evenly through the compartments. This is called a wet dry uh, trickle filter system. And for the first compartment here, we're going to be using filter floss for my mechanical filtration. For the second uh, compartment, we are going to be using pot scrubbies for the biological filtration, also really cheap and cost effective. For the third stage, I'm going to continue using more um, bio biological filtration and this time I'm going to be using lava rock. Very, very good media for aquariums very cost effective. And because this is a lot heavier than plastic pot scrubbies, I will be putting it on the last drawer. And then when this setup is in the tank, I will be putting all my uh, filt uh, I mean my heaters down there and uh, some blocks for uh, chemical filtration or some carbon. And uh, here is going to be my return pump. The return pump I decided to use is the Marine DC pump at uh, 15,000 um, size. And basically the reason why I chose that one is uh, this is rated for about 4,000 gallons per hour. And you want to shoot for about 10 times um, what you currently have as your aquarium setup, which is uh, 480 gallons. So it's not quite 10 times, but close. And uh, because we're going to be using a lot of piping though, you cut it about uh, in half. So we're talking more about, you know, uh, 2000. And this is actually not bad because a lot of people say 10 times the, the power is not necessary, but about uh, five times, four to five times is quite adequate, uh, adequate. So that's why I decided to use this type of pump and uh, hopefully it will work for my needs. So here you see my overflow box and um, the water is going to come out of there through a one and a half inch pipe down into the sump through all these different stages of filtration. Uh, and then the uh, DC pump will shoot it back out into the tank and it's going to travel through some one inch piping. And uh, this is kind of what you want to shoot for. You want to have your uh, overflow box go through a larger diameter hose compared to your return pump. And for the plumbing itself, I was told it is a good idea to use lots of unions because that way you can disassemble certain sections of your system instead of having to take out all the pipes at once as one piece. You also want to use ball valves to control the flow. Even though this pump has a, a smart controller for controlling the flow, but it's good to have more options and yeah, this is basically what it's going to entail to plumb 
you know, my filtration. So hopefully everything works. This is the very first time I'm doing this. And uh, with the help of a lot of YouTubers, I hope I can manage to get this done successfully. When it comes to drilling the tank, first I'm going to be uh, making a line here as my marker to make sure that all the holes basically reside in this area that I'm going to be drilling so that water doesn't flow out to the sides. And for that I'm going to be using a step drill bit and I will be using some egg crate to basically evenly mark my holes so that I have some even water distribution when it's all done. So the only compartment where I'll be drilling additional holes is going to be the first one because it sits above the rim of the tank. And what I want to avoid is when this fills up, when it gets clogged, that water just flows out over to the side and uh, spilling into my floor. So basically I will add some additional small holes to the side to uh, have kind of a safety barrier so that it can, can trickle down into the aquarium. So I'm basically finished with the uh, piping for the overflow box that will transport the water into the uh, first drawer of the trickle tower. So it starts with the 90 degree angle and here we have a union so I can easily uh, take this off for cleaning. Uh, followed by a ball valve which I can use to control the flow or just shut off the water flow when I do maintenance so it doesn't uh, overflow my sump. Here we have another union, uh, so I can take this bottom piece off, which actually goes into the top of this trickle tower. And uh, now that I have the, basically, the skeleton, the model of how it's going to look, I have to glue everything together with this uh, PVC glue. So instead of using PVC piping, even though I've already done all the hard work of cutting and everything up, um, I will be using flexible PVC uh, tubing, only for the return, only for this piece. So basically anything you see here um, that is uh, PVC pipes will be replaced with the tubing. And because I'm using tubing, I don't need this many elbows. I may have one elbow straight down to the pump uh, because uh, this is pretty rigid and hard to uh, go around corners with. So I'm going to have one elbow here and then one back up into the tank. So only two instead of one, two, three, and four. So the water will flow um, less, you know, more, more freely. So yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing.
right guys so the plumbing is finally finished and let's look at the side here we have these big pipes we have a union here we have a ball valve uh, more unions and then it will go into this uh, let me show you from here into the trickle tower here I have the uh, mechanical filtration which is the uh, polyester filling here we have bio biological filtration which is the uh, uh, pot scrubbies and then down here we have the uh, red lava rock uh, pump is installed uh, water goes back up this is a, a ball I mean a um, one way valve so if the water uh, the pump ever shuts off and the water tries to come down it will stop there and basically goes up to the tank on the back and back into the uh, aquarium so i'm already filling up the uh, the water so that it goes over to the sump and, and then i mean the overflow box and then into the sump because I'm going to be testing now if my setup works. So let's do that. So first I'm going to turn the bar valve to open the flow. All right. Lots of water coming in. And it is settling, which is good. So let's see how this water trickles down. All right, trickles evenly, which is great. And then goes further down into the lava rock. And basically now I have to figure out how high do I want the water to go before I stop it. Because then I need to figure out uh, when this pump ever goes off due to a power outage, how much space do I need uh, to leave open for the water that will come rushing from the back into the sump before you know these teeth are no longer uh, underwater? So yeah, this will be um, taking up some time for to figure this out. Okay, guys. So I've turned on the pump, and as you can hear, the water is flowing into the tank. It is draining from the overflow box through these pipes that are built into the trickle tower. Here I have two pads of um, this polyester that I cut into um, size, the pot scrubbies and the lava rock. And I measured that the water level has to be about here um, to leave enough space um, for the um, event that this ever turns off. Actually, I will be doing a test to make sure, but uh, that will, we're gonna do that right after this. And uh, yeah, everything seems to be working fine. There are no leaks. Um, hopefully it stays this way. And yeah, not bad. This is, was the first time uh, building something like this. And uh, didn't have to modify the the strength of the pump at all it's just running at full speed and uh yeah the only thing i have to address obviously is the noise it's really really noisy so this is like a, a waterfall shooting down so this will be one thing i have to address but um i'm going to shut off the pump and then uh, we're going to see if this is enough space enough clearance um, to hold the water that will be coming down from the overflow box basically to the end of these teeth and uh, Yeah, the water that will come down from the return should be stopped by this one-way valve that I put in place so Yeah, that should uh, should be doing the trick. So let's test it. Okay guys. So after waiting a couple of minutes um, Basically, we can see that when the power goes out the water that will come down from the overflow box basically down to the teeth to the end of the teeth will flow in and if we keep the water level when the sump is actually running at this point it has enough room as you can see here for the water that will come in from the overflow box in the case of a power outage 
So that is great news. However, there's one important point. If you look here, you see that the point where the water goes into the tank is still half submerged. So what that means, in case of a power outage, uh, the return, I mean, the water from the overflow box will fit in here just fine. But if this one-way check valve ever fails, then we will have additional water coming down from the return that will go back into the tank. And this little tiny space here will not be enough to uh, hold that water. So what that means is when I basically install a nozzle for the water to shoot out, I have to make sure that the nozzle is above this space here because this is the space above water. So basically you have to make sure it's basically at the ceiling of the, of the tank. It cannot be dipping down because then the water could go into the uh, sump and overflow it, okay? So basically, uh, yeah, I have to keep it as high as possible so that it will stay out of the water when the overflow box strains and then this won't, you know, add to the problem. And that's basically it. I think this sump is ready for use and uh, when the time comes. So next to me we're going to be doing is installing the 3D background from Aqua Decor Design as well as the stand-in locks. Just like you've seen in the video from the King of Do It Yourself, uh, since we're doing exactly that same aquarium, just much bigger and taller. So that will be coming in the next episode.